In this chapter, we're going to be taking a look at the basics of the Views user interface, learning our way around its administration screens, and figuring out how to customize a couple of basic views that come with the module. The first thing we need to do is go to the Modules page in Drupal and turn on Views. Views is actually divided into several modules. Views itself handles actually displaying views, pulling content out of the Drupal database, and displaying it to users. The Views UI module is what we'll be using to look at the existing views that are there, customize them, and build our own. If we check both of those and hit Save Configuration, Drupal warns us that we also need to enable the Chaos Tools module. Chaos Tools is an API module that Views uses to do certain things like exporting and importing definitions of views, displaying its AJAX pop-up windows, and so on. We actually don't need to worry too much about Chaos Tools other than making sure that it's turned on when we enable views. So we'll, let, we'll hit continue and allow Drupal to enable it. Now that we've turned all those modules on, we can close this screen and go to the Structure view. On the Structure page, we can see that view, there's a new entry for the Views module. If we drill down to that page, we get our first look at the Views administration screen. Here, Views lists all of the different views that have been defined. These come with views automatically, and they provide useful examples of some of its capabilities. None of them are turned on by, the def by default, but they're there in case we want to look at them. A couple examples are the archive view that displays a monthly listing of what content has been posted on the site, the backlinks view that uh, displays what content is referencing other content on the site, and the front page. We're going to take a look at the front page view. One of the reasons it's useful for people who are starting out is that it provides an exact duplicate of the normal default Drupal front page. But because it's built with views, all of its settings can be customized. We can change the sort order, how nodes that are in the, on the front page get displayed, and so on. So we'll click this Enable link here, and see that it pops up to the top of the list, and now it's highlighted, indicating that it's turned on. On this screen, we can see that it provides several URL paths, front page and rss.xml, and we can also pull down this drop-down menu and see what actions can be performed. We can edit the view, disable it again, clone it and build our own version from scratch, or export it so that it can be reused on other sites. Right now, we'll click the Edit link. This is the main interface screen for the Views module. It's what we'll be looking at whenever we customize a view, build one from scratch, or just take a look at how an existing view is built. At the very top, we can see a listing of the displays that are part of this view. Page is the most common type of display used by views. It allows you to define a URL that lives on the Drupal site that lists content in some form that's visible to end users. Feed is another common type. It allows you to generate an RSS feed or, using third-party modules, Atom feeds, JSON feeds, or other types of data intended for use by news readers or external applications that will be pulling information from your website. By using a page view and a feed view together, we can provide a listing of content that's both viewable by users and by software that pulls in that information. Under the Add button, there's a list of additional display types that can be added to this view. Block, references, and attachment are, two, are three types that we'll be taking a look at later. At the other side, we can also see actions that can be performed on the view itself. We can edit the name and description of the view, run an analyze tool to see what, um, what SQL queries are being generated, and we can also clone and export the view here too. The important thing to keep in mind is that all of the different displays that are added up here are just different views of the same underlying information. In the section below, we can see where that stuff is customized. We can see different views related settings, like the title of the view, what format the information should be presented in, the front page view presents things in an unformatted list, and shows teaser views of each one of the nodes that are in the list. The filter criteria allows you to control what things will appear in the listing. Right now we've got it set to show nodes that are both promoted to the front page and published. And then the sort criteria allow you to determine what stuff should appear at the top of the list. 
In order to match the behavior of the front page view that Drupal comes with automatically, this view is sorting so that sticky nodes appear at the very top, and then it's sorting by post date. In the middle of the screen, you can also see settings that are specific to this particular kind of display, the page. We can set what path the page appears at, in this case, front page, and we can also choose whether or not a menu item for this particular view appears in Drupal's navigation items. If desired, you can also set access controls. Well, we won't be doing that right now, but we'll take advantage of that feature later. And then you can also change header and footer information. For example, if you want to provide some useful information about what kind of content people will be looking at on this view, you could put that into the header. The pager also allows you to customize the appearance of the forward and backward arrows that appear beneath a view if there's too much content to fit on just one page. Finally, there's an advanced tab. Underneath the advanced tab, we can find a couple of the more complex options that can be set on any given view. There's contextual filters, relationships, the behavior of the view when no results are found, exposed form settings, and other miscellaneous settings that can be configured for any given view. We'll be looking at these in detail later. We don't have to worry about them too much for now, but it's important to remember that if you're looking around for any of those options, they're underneath the advanced tab. In Drupal 6, they were mixed with the rest of the view's user interface, and it can take a little getting used to. If we scroll down to the very bottom of the view's administration screen, we can see a section that's very, very helpful if you're building out complex views. It's the automatic preview area. Whenever you're building out a view, this area will, ke will keep updating itself to reflect the changes that you're making. Right now, we can see a listing of what content would appear in this view if we actually went to the front page URL that it provides. In this dropdown, you can even jump to change any of the individual settings for this view, adding and editing filters, changing fields if it's appropriate for the particular display you're looking at, changing the sorts, adding contextual filters and relationships, and so on. It's the same type of pop-up screens that you would be able to see using the administrative screen above, but down here, it's in context, and you can edit it while you're actually looking at the preview. Let's scroll up a bit and actually change some of the settings and see how it works in views. One of the simplest settings that we can change on this view is the number of items that are displayed on each page. By default, Views has limited this view to 10 items per page. If any more than that appear, we'll see forward and backward pages appear at the bottom of the listing. If we click on that item in the Views administration screen, it'll pop up a second window and allow us to change the settings. If we change that to a much smaller number, let's say two items per page, and hit apply, we can immediately scroll down and see that reflected in the preview. Since we had three items in the list previously, we'll see two now and the new pager appearing at the bottom. And as I mentioned earlier, the pager section has its own dropdown right here in the preview. We can pop up that editing screen again, change it back to 10 items, and apply. Whether you want to use the contextual dropdowns in Views Preview, or use the overview section of the administration screen and edit directly, is completely up to you. Either one gives you access to the same settings pages. You'll notice that because we've been making changes to the view, at the very top of the administration screen there's a warning that's appeared. It says that all changes are stored tempor temporarily, and that we need to ch click Save to make them permanent. Views is able to hold on to the edits we've been making on this particular view. It's even smart enough to be able to keep track of it if we close the page and navigate back to it. But if we edit a second view, or do anything that causes views to um, lose track of that temporary cache, all of our changes will be lost. It's important to click Save on the view screen anytime you've made changes that you want to hold on to. It tells us that our view has been saved, and we can go back to editing without worrying about losing our changes. Some settings in views, primarily the ones that deal with the actual structure of the information that's being pulled back from the database, like filters, sorts, fields, and so on, have the potential to affect all of the displays that are currently in use on the view. In our case, both the page and the feed display. If I click on the content published filter, views will pop up a screen that lets me change the settings for that filter. Now, 
It's important to note that at the very top of that edit, edit pop-up, there's a drop-down that allows, to, that allows us to choose whether or not this change should affect all of the displays that are part of this view, or just the page display. If we choose to only edit the page display, it effectively overrides all of the shared defaults that all displays in this view will be using. We could change that to show unpublished content instead of published content, hit apply. Because we've overridden this setting on this particular display, you can see that there's an icon indicating that this setting is overridden on the page display. Now, on a real view that we're using on a live site, we probably wouldn't want to set the filter to only to show unpublished content. That would mean that anyone who visits this page would see nodes even if they aren't intended to be seen by the public. So we'll go in and change that back. But you can see that the override icon is still displayed. Any changes we make to the filter criteria for this page display are now unique to the page display rather than all displays. If we want to change it back to use the default settings that are shared by all displays, we can click on it and choose, select all displays from this drop-down again. Once we click apply, the icon will disappear indicating that this display is using the shared filter criteria that are, that are in use across all displays. It takes a bit of getting used to, but if you pay attention to the visual cues that the Views module gives you, you should be able to keep track of whether you're editing something that's specific to a display or shared across all of them. Before we go on, we're going to make one more change to our view. One of the most common tweaks that, that people want to make to the front page of a default Drupal site is changing the sort order. By default, Drupal displays all of the front page nodes in reverse chronological order, the newest items first. If you wanted to reverse that, you'd need views. On our front page view, we're going to change the sort order so that the oldest items are first. We can go to the sort criteria section and click on the post date sort. If we click on it, we can change from sort descending to sort ascending and apply that change. If we scroll down in the preview, we can see that older items are appearing at the top, and newer items are appearing below. We'll scroll to the top, hit save, and then go back to the main views administration page where we can see a list of all of the current views on the site. Our front page view is still, in, still being displayed here, and we can see the different paths that it provides, the front page URL and the rss.xml URL that's provided by the feed display. If we click on that front page path, it will take us to the actual view that we've created. We can see our content being displayed oldest first, but other than that, it looks just like the normal, views for, uh, normal Drupal front page. The only difference is when you mouse over this screen, you'll see that there's a contextual drop-down that allows you to jump right to the views editing screen from the page that it's being displayed on. Now, Right now, you can see that we're looking at the view on the front page URL. If we wanted to use our view as the actual front page of the Drupal site, we'd need to change the front page configuration. We can go up to the configuration menu, click site information, and scroll down to the bottom of the administration page. Here, we can see what the default front page is. If we enter in the URL of our view, then save the configuration. If we click on the Home tab to go to the front page of our site, we can see that our view is now in use. Oldest items are being displayed at the top of the list, and if we mouse over the front page, we can see that it's a view, because this context link is allowing us to jump right to the edit screen for the view. In this chapter, we've taken a look at the View's user interface and learned our way around its administration screens. If you're used to Views 2 from Drupal 6, it might take a little getting used to. A lot of Views' more complex options have been moved underneath the Advanced tab. But overall, the interface is quite a bit more streamlined and should be pretty easy to use once you get used to it. In the next chapter, we'll be taking a look at how to build out our own custom Views from scratch. Drupal.